Today is the call to worship for June 28th. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will, will be with you all. And also with you. Rejoice in your salvation. We will sing to God who has dealt bountifully with us. Bountiful God, we voice our gratitude in prayer and song and the offering of ourselves in dedication to your church. You are saving us from our sins as we trust in Jesus Christ our Savior and worship in the Spirit. Amen. Good morning. I need your help. Do you see what I'm holding? That's right. It's an invitation. Who's it to? That's right. It's an invitation to Jesus. Now, if we open it up, what is this invitation to Jesus for? Yes, I want to invite Jesus to my house for dinner. How could I get this invitation to Jesus? How could I send it to him? Could I tweet it to him? Could I send it by text message? Could I mail it? Hmm. All of those are good ways to try to send a message, but sending a message to heaven would be difficult. I know I can learn how to send the message from reading my Bible. Read the passage from Matthew 10. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Jesus also says, suppose someone gives an, even a cup of cold water to a little one who follows me that person will certainly be rewarded. Jesus tells his disciples that whoever invites them is also inviting Jesus. Whoever welcomes the disciple, disciples also welcomes him. I can invite a disciple, one of Jesus' friends, to dinner at my house, which means I am also inviting Jesus. What if I invited a pastor friend? Would I be inviting Jesus? Or if I invited a famous NBA player who points to heaven every time he scores, would that be inviting Jesus to dinner? What if I invited one of you? Would I be inviting Jesus? Do you see any of Jesus' friends around here? How many of friends how many of you are friends with Jesus? Raise your hands. There are a lot of disciples of Jesus here today. Do you think you could invite Jesus to dinner? Of course you could. When you invite a friend of Jesus to dinner, you are also inviting Jesus to dinner. As we pray, point to someone who is a disciple of Jesus, and you may even want to point to yourself. Let's bow our heads. Jesus, we invite you into our lives. Help us to serve you by opening our hearts and our homes in love for all people. Amen.
Today we have two scripture readings. First is from Matthew 24, verses 36 through 44. The second is Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. From Matthew, but about the day or the hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken away, and one will be left behind. Two women will be grinding the meal together. One will be taken away. One will be left behind. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But I understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. From Isaiah, the word that Isaiah's son of Amos said, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that He may teach us His ways, that we may walk in His paths. For out of Zion sh shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks, Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The Word of God for the people of God. <laughs> El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El El Yon Adonai. Age to age, you're still the same by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kon Kon Adonai. We will praise and lift you high. El Shaddai, through your love and through the ram, you save the son of Abraham. By the power of your hand, turn the sea into dry land. To the outcast on her knees, you were the God who really sees. And by your might, you set your children free. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El El Yana Adonai, age to age you're still the same, by the power of the name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Kon Kon Adonai, we will praise and lift you high. El Shaddai Through the years you made it clear That the time of Christ was near Though your people couldn't see What Messiah ought to be Though your word contained the plan They just could not understand your most awesome work was done 
through the frailty of your Son. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Elyon Adonai, age to age you're still the same, by the power of the name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, fair con con Adonai, I will praise you till I die, El Shaddai. The title for today's sermon or moments of reflection is called Choosing a Journey of Peace. Now, journeys begin with a choice. I think of the Clash song, Should I Stay or Should I Go? Uh, that's our theme song for pastors come spring move time and reappointments. We sometimes wonder, should we stay or should we go? But we... Say it embracing the known and the comfortable. Or shall I go and maybe find something wonderful, maybe something unsettled or upset or uncertain, needing to be fixed or realigned? A lot depends upon your age and stay in life, I suppose. If you're a backseat person, you may not feel like you had a choice. You were dragged along by those in charge of you. I remember my upbringing being more dictatorial than what I see now. But even there, you have a choice. Are we going to enter into the spirit of the journey or sit with arms folded and our heads down and our grumpy face on? Your choice is whether you're going to add to the joy of the journey or make it miserable for everyone, yourself included. So journeys have to begin with a choice. Our gospel text from Matthew talks about those who don't even know that there is a journey going on. They're just there, doing their thing, not even noticing that plans were being made, reservations are in place, travel snacks have been purchased, my favorite is homemade Chex Party Mix. Kathy has a great recipe for that where she adds a little extra garlic, but I digress. They're too busy to pay attention, too focused on the task at hand to notice that there is movement. In fact, today we would say that the keys are being jangled and the car is being pulled out and you'd better be finding your seat. The call in Matthew's Gospel Indeed, the call of Advent, and I'm not talking about Advent in the sense of preparing for Christmas, but the call of Advent here is to wake up and pay attention to what's going on all around us. Have you ever noticed that Advent is the first half of the word adventure? It means that you've got to plan and pay attention to everything that's going on around you if you want your adventure to be something memorable. The task described in the text, they're not bad things. They're not anti-faith things. Whether it is the life things of eating and drinking or sharing life in committed relationships and extended families, or whether it is the labor of our own hands, tilling the fields, grinding the corn, punching a time clock, filling in forms, tightening down screws. All of this is work that needs to be done. All of it is about building a life. And the call isn't necessarily to add more to an already busy schedule. That's the problem that we too often have in our preaching. We load up our hearers with an even longer list of things to do. Come to worship and get your marching orders for the week. Well, 
the problem with that is that uh, most of you are AWOL during the rest of the week and sometimes on Sundays as well. So instead of a to-do list, Jesus wants us to have a pay attention list. You must be ready, he says, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Now, regardless of where you stand on the return of Christ issue, whether for you, you think it should be like a thief in the night, or the opposite view that it should be in clouds of glory, or maybe you're part of those that believe that the Son of God has already come and that we're living in the working out of the reign of God time. That's why we need to be alert, and it seems that that should be our call. But the real question is, alert to what? Now, while some might be content to wait for a supernatural appearance that will answer all of our questions and resolve all of our doubts, most of us would rather have something a little more real world to look for. Something a little more practical for us to do. Or else we just might prefer to keep grinding our corn and punching our time clocks. So that's why we're also looking at Isaiah this morning. Now I know some of you are thinking, wait, what in the world is practical about a text from the Hebrew Scriptures this week? Isaiah is a vision, a dream, a glance into the unreality of what isn't in the midst of what really is. Even Isaiah admits that. In the days he co to come, he says, he didn't say, not now, not today, one day, someday, maybe. It's all beyond our reach. Pie in the sky. We want to live in a world as it is. Well, at least that's what we claim. Not as what we wish were true, except that we really wish some things were true in the midst of seeing violence and issues that we don't know where we stand. You know, there's an old joke about sculpting. The fellow was asked, how do you make a sculpture of a horse? And the artist said, you get a great big rock and you start chipping away everything that doesn't look like a horse. Well... I'm not so sure that that really works for sculpting. I've tried that a few times, and I just have a smaller rock when it's all said and done. But it might work for the people of God. What could be more practical than taking our lives, our culture, and our community and carving away anything that doesn't look like a vision that we have for God's reign? With Isaiah's vision for peace as a guide, we can make the choice to journey towards the realization of a dream that could change how we live in the world of today. Advent, again, we're not talking about Christmas, is about anticipating something that is on the horizon, something greater than we can imagine on our own, something that speaks of God breaking into the world that we know. The season and the sermon calls our communities to choose the way of peace in their homes, in their communities, and in their online presence as the very beginning points. From there, the season calls us to begin having an influence around us in the ways of peace, to call for peacemaking in our schools and in our neighborhoods, in our local governments, and community priorities. We're called to take considered stands on policy issues that have an impact on all of us as citizens, but also followers of the one who comes. We can wait in all sorts of postures. 
We can be inert knowing that the true transformation will come only from God. Or we can choose to journey towards the world of Advent, the world that Advent promises by walking in paths of peace. Paths of peace, even now. Amen. We can continue to give thanks and praise to your stewardship and the continuation of your gifts coming by either text or mail or any other method that you have of getting it to us. Please realize that the ministries of the church have never stopped in what we are doing in outreach to our children and to our community. So we continue to give thanks. Let us pray. Gracious God, your hospitality has surrounded us and welcomed us even when we only grudgingly extended hospitality to sisters and brothers who are also your children. May we grow each day in our willingness to be welcoming disciples, not just to those who look like us, talk like us, or think like us. May our offering this morning be received not just in gratitude for your hospitality, but as our way to extend comfort and welcome to those for whom your love is a mystery. We pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. We have six new names to add to this week's prayer list. Sandy Warwick, Karen Johnston, Megan Young, Karen Baumgartner, Erwin Coates, and Gary. Let us pray. Christ of glory, in your right hand are the stars of the churches. Save your people from having but the name of being alive. Arouse the slothful and confirm the faithful. Strengthen the good things that could die out. And may the work of your church stand the fire of testing. May your people hold fast to the truth that they have received in Christ and not defile the white robes of their baptism by disobedience to your directions. God of the old and the young, those of middle years, may our children come to you in faith and lifelong commitment. Sustain those who bear the burden and the heat of the day, all who must carry another's burdens as well as their own. Grant patience to those whose days are numbered, who have completed their working days and can only anticipate the service of heaven. Give them rest from their labors and an assured entry into heaven where their deeds follow them. Enable us to keep the faith and continue their labors in the gospel where there is still time for us. To you, we will come and experience a joyful reunion with our families in the household of God. And to you, O oh God, we ascribe glory and praise, time without end, as we pray together as the Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Make me a servant Make me a servant, make me a servant, make me a servant. 
God be with you till we meet again. Are his counsels gone upon you? With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you as we are apart, be with you in all the ways that you re-enter society and the everyday activities that you take. Go now with the peace of God. Amen.